Hey guys, this is Jay. Today, we'll talk about the most beloved isopod in the hobby. First, let me give you a tour of my two enclosures for my Cobayer species rubber duckies. My first colony was established in June 27, 2019. I purchased five duckies because that's how much I could afford back then. And I added six more on July 27, 2019. I must have paid $25 each. So I started with 11 rubber duckies. And now I have two colonies, two enclosure, maybe hundreds of them. And I want to share my secrets of my success in breeding Cobayer species rubber duckies. So this is actually my first care video. Let's start from what we know about Cobayer species rubber ducky. It's from Thailand. They found it inside the limestone caves. They called it rubber ducky for obvious reason. And it's designated as a Cobayer species rubber ducky. Species meaning it's not properly classified by science yet. My basic setup, my container is a 6 quart Sterilite container that I purchased at Walmart. It has holes for air ventilation. For my substrate, two parts organic potting mix that I just purchased in a local store. I'll go back with this later. Two parts sterilized deciduous leaves, one part coconut core, one part sphagnum moss, one part aspen snake bedding, and RODI water. Furnishing, you have to provide them a cork bark, and I've noticed that they love magnolia pods. They like to go into these crevices, and they would also decompose the pod after a few years. I've heard people put limestones in their culture. Uh, it just makes your container heavy. They will thrive with a cork bark and just a magnolia pod. For temperature, let's go back to the limestone caves in Thailand. The average temperature inside a cave is around 50 to 75 Fahrenheit. So make sure you put your container in your house that's not higher than 80 degrees. When I was in grad school, I took forest ecology and I've been to caves back home in the Philippines which is similar to the caves in Thailand. Caves in Southeast Asia are moist and cool. So my substrate are a little moist all over the place. So there's no bone dry section in my substrate. It's all moist but not soaking wet. As for their diet, their main diet is dry sterilized deciduous leaves, maple and oak leaves. They also enjoy occasional treats like zucchini, bok choy, and butternut squash. They go crazy with butternut squash. Things I avoid Rapashi morning wood and Rapashi bug burger. Since my substrate is very moist, it will just mold fast like the next day. Another thing is fish pellets. It will just attract gnats and parasites. You also have to provide them springtails. This is their cleanup crew. One important thing that you need to understand if you receive your first rubber ducky culture is they will hide and burrow until they get established. This can take up to six months or up to a year. So my first culture did not reproduce right away. It took them exactly one year. So be patient. This is the number one requirements for a breeder or a collector, but once they are established they will reproduce and they will thrive for their calcium source we have to remember where they're from they're from limestone caves and limestone caves is actually made up of calcium carbonate so I gave them a calcium carbonate for human consumption this has the same composition 
found in the limestone which is the calcium carbonate. I just sprinkled it on the substrate. You can also give them a limestone rock. It, I think it just will make it heavy and you just make sure it's a powdery form or it's just a rock. They are not going to be able to use it. Um, garden lime, yes, it will make the soil more acidic but we have to remember limestone caves are acidic. My only issues with this one is you have to mix this in substrate and it's just a little time consuming for me. And you have to add more in the future which means that you have to mix it again in the substrate and you will just disturb your culture. I think sprinkling calcium carbonate powder is more efficient. The story about my second culture is a bit different and more successful than the first one. The reason why I decided to make a separate culture is I don't want my rubber ducky culture crashing. So I separated about 15 juveniles but I did something different this time. I thought about going back to the limestone caves. I remember when I was doing field trips back home in the Philippines um, in the limestone caves there are a lot of bats living inside the limestone cave and I remember stepping into a lot of bat guano or droppings. I did some research then I stumbled into Happy Frog organic potting soil mix. This contains bat guano, warm casting, beneficial soil microbes and mycorrhizal fungi. So instead of using a regular organic potting soil, I use this and of course coconut core, dry leaves, sphagnum moss, aspen snake bedding, and RODI water. And just changing that, I've noticed that I did not have to wait for a full year for them to get settled. It only took them six months and they start reproducing. It makes sense. If you think about it, isopods and springtails are decomposers but they also need microorganisms to further break down the byproducts that they already break down. Plus the bat guano is also a game changer. Aside from the leaf droppings, cave dwellers isopods also decomposes bat droppings. The bat droppings will give them more nutrition aside from the leaf litters. So a rubber duck is hard isopods to breed? The answer is no. They are easy isopods to take care of as long as you mimic their natural habitat which means low temperature, moist substrate. They're also not display animal. They're cave dwellers. Caves are dark. They don't want to be disturbed. They don't like bright lights. And also if you could give them bat guano that would help. Do I need to give them organic zucchini or organic butternut squash? My answer is I don't. I just wash my vegetable very well. Isopods are not insects. They're crustaceans and most importantly, they're decomposers. There's even scientific study that they can ingest heavy metals. This juvenile is not a blondie. It will darken as it get older. No one really knows if blondie is a color morph of ro rubber duckies. Some breeders say it's found in a different cave in Thailand. But no one really knows. There's so many mystery about how they collected Koberi species rubber ducky. We just don't know the answer. Also, don't be surprised if you order um, rubber duckies and you get a juvenile. It's hard to ship a full grown adult. They dry very fast. The number one killer rubber ducky is drying out. Kuberi species rubber ducky is definitely my favorite isopod. They're very beautiful in person, especially when you have a lot of them. You can just stare for them for hours. I've sold a lot of this isopod at my eBay store. I actually recoup my investment. I give free sterilized magnolia pod and calcium carbonate to my customer. And that's the reason why I made this video. They keep asking what is this magnolia pod and calcium carbonate for. 
I hope you like this video. If you like and learn something, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel and I get to do more of this isopod video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and I will try to answer them. Thank you for watching my video.